Hello, and welcome to Bespoke Unit. My name is Rafael, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing an up close and personal review of what's perhaps one of the most beloved and widespread dive watch styles in the industry. And that's, of course, the Value King, the Seiko SKX. More specifically, this is the base model, that's as basic as it gets, and that's the SKX007. Now, you can't tell from over there, but I have with me both the J version, the made in Japan version, as well as the K version, which is made outside of Japan. I'll get into those details and much more in the video, so let's get started. And here we have them, our two Seiko SKX watches. I did mention briefly in the intro that I was gonna be doing a comparison between our made in Japan version, or J version, and the non-made in Japan, usually denominated with a K. Um, there's really very few differences between these two. I would say these watches are probably 99% identical as far as aesthetics and the performance, even though this one was made and likely assembled entirely in Japan, this one outside of Japan. There's rumors as to where that happens, potentially Hong Kong, potentially Malaysia. Nobody's really sure, and Seiko is not in a hurry to, um, to identify that specifically for collectors. Anyways, that being said, I'm gonna be using the Japan version for the majority of this review, particularly because it is on the default or the original, the OEM rubber strap that most Seiko SKXs are sold on or can be purchased on, especially if you find a dead stock one or a, a new condition one, as you won't be getting these from new retailers because they're not discontinued. So uh, if you didn't know, now you know. Anyways, getting started, you'll often find that the SKX is listed as a 43 millimeter watch, however, if you have some cl trusty calibers as I do here, you can measure more specifically and you'll see that it's closer to 42.5 millimeters, which is not a huge difference, of course, from that advertised 43, but I think it's worth mentioning. Moving on, the thickness is gonna be 13.4 millimeters at its thickest point, which is not terrible, but not a super slim watch. Not that you'd expect it to be this, of course, intended to be a professional tool, let's say a professional diver's watch. Lastly, I am gonna use my other version here to get a better measure of the lug to lug. And that's gonna be 46 millimeters. It's a hair under that right here. One last measurement, the strap size. So the length between the lugs, and that's the 22 millimeters. If you were interested in looking for a different strap for this timepiece, that's the dimension that you're gonna need. Taking a closer look at the case of the Seiko SKX007, we can see, of course, that it's stainless steel. All of these watches, all of the SKXs have the same finish, which I've become quite a fan of, and that's gonna be the top of the case. You can see it here on the lugs and slightly under the bezel is gonna be a brushed finish, whereas the sides and the back are gonna be high polish. I think this does give it a nice, it's a simple way for Seiko to have made these watches. You know, it gives it a bit of visual complexity and I always think that those different layers of textures make a watch certainly more appealing. Continuing on to the bezel, of course, we can see that this is a unidirectional, can only rotate it counterclockwise. It's a unidirectional diver's bezel. It is 120 clicks. So each of those clicks that you hear there, there's 120 of them going all the way around. Inside the bezel, there is what appears to be a metal insert. I'm not sure what type of metal. Most of the time on, on timepieces, it's aluminum. Um, Seiko doesn't really identify, and I haven't found any information online to specifically indicate what this may be. Of course, we can see it has our full diver scale. All the minute markings that are there, as well as the 10-minute numeral intervals. And those are a silver, metallic silver on black, so the, the legibility on this bezel is definitely great. And you do have a luminous pip there at the top. So even if you're diving in dark conditions, you're gonna be able to see where your timer, your diving timer, calculator, if you will, a very rudimentary calculator, you're gonna see where it started and ultimately where it's gonna end and when you have to surface. The crystal on the SKX007 is gonna be a Seiko Hardlex crystal, which is scratch resistant. You can see that on this case of this watch, there's a plenty of scuffs since it's been worn for 
a it's, it's part of a personal collection, so it's been worn for quite a number of years, but the crystal, aside from the smudges there, is perfect. There's no chips, there's no scratches, and that speaks to the durability well, of all Seiko watches, really, but obviously more specifically in our case here of this crystal and the Hardlix crystal that is the same on all SKXs and for our purposes, the Japan and both the non-Japan versions. Uh, I do like to point out on the SKX, there is a bit of a channel here between the crystal and the bezel, which again, uh, harking back to the layers of, of textures, let's say, on, on watches, I think makes it, it's a small detail, but when you're getting a wrist shot or in my experience, when I'm driving in the car and maybe the light is hitting the watch in a different way, I don't know, I just think that that little channel there makes it a bit more attractive, a bit more interesting to the eye. Moving into the dial, we can see that this is a flat black dial. It's surrounded by what's a, a raised and slanted minute track. That minute track is going to have silver printings, uh, silver minute markings there. Um, inside the dial, obviously there's very large oversized hour indices and each of these are filled with a lot of loom. So if you go outside, let's say you're indoors, I do have a big light here, so you're really not going to be able to get an idea. But these loom, these plots are massive. So if you go outside, charge up the watch and then come back inside, even when it's still day, daylight out, these will these will light up a room. The loom here is again Seiko Lumibrite. That's going to be green. And of course, as I mentioned, plenty of it makes it super, super attractive when you can get a, a good shot of it. The hands at center are going to be polished, as you can see there. And of course, they also have tons of loom. Lastly, our last seconds hand that you can see ticking away is a dual tone. It does have a nice lollipop, let's say, cantilever. And our indicator side is a stark white color. Now, continuing on here with the dial, we come to our first difference between the Japan version and the non-Japan version, or first couple of differences. So. Under the Divers 200, you can see that the Japan version here in my left hand says 21 joules. The non-Japan version does not. Now, these both have the same movement, the 7S26, and I'll talk a little bit more about the movement in a minute. Um, they're both 21 joules. This is just a difference in printing, a difference in indication, but again, same performance in the two movements. And also, the other big difference is, is probably what tons of collectors pay a premium for. The one, the Japan version says, made in Japan at the bottom of the dial there here around six o'clock whereas the non-Japan version doesn't say made in Japan it does have some indications regarding the movement the the caliber reference the Japan version does too there on the right but that's going to be one of our biggest differences now moving on to our window function here I do want to show a difference of course you can see there that Ironically, this Japanese market version has Arabic as one of its languages. The other language being English. So on the SKXs, you'll always find that they have two languages. The Japanese version will always have English and Arabic is quite common. You can, of course, customize these by, uh, you can buy the date disc online and get a local watchmaker to change it for you. But just telling you what to expect if you're buying these in new or dead stock condition. Um, briefly, we went through that, but you can see the Saturday is a blue color and the Sunday is a red color, whereas everything else is black on a white background. Now, on the other hand, our non-made in Japan version is gonna have, if you don't recognize that already, that is Spanish, English, and Spanish. I do believe, again, the majority of the non-Japan versions have English and Spanish as of the main two languages. The Seiko is so predisposed or collectors love customizing these that if you get one secondhand, it's quite possible that that person had the language changed. As I mentioned earlier, it's not difficult. You just, you do have to open the, the, the movement. And if you're not, if you're not a watchmaker, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. Or maybe if you don't mind uh, learning an expensive lesson and you do want to get into watchmaking, then go for it. Um, you can see, again, the date Saturday was in blue and Sunday in red. Those are really the biggest differences between the Japan and non-Japan versions. Now, before moving on, I'll show you the last one and then I'll continue with the, the characteristics of the watch 
You can look here at the case spec, how it says Japan WP up there, whereas a non-Japan version does not. They both say stainless steel. They both have that same embossed image where it's, it looks to be an ocean wave, scuba divers. They mentioned the movement, 7S26. So it's, it's really all the same. There's just a few, few small differences that separate the two and the few small differences that often make a big difference in the prices. Now, continuing on with the strap, this is the OEM strap for the SKX. This is a, a rubber wave strap, I believe it's called. It's got this wave motif. You can see the rubber is kind of stiff, which in my experience doesn't make for super comfortable wear. However, it's so iconic. It's so unique to the SKX. Um, if anybody doesn't see your watch, but they see that strap and they know timepieces, they're going to know that it's an SKX. So I'm sure this is one of the points that collectors have come to love. Personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of this wave strap when I first got the, hand, the, the watch in my hands. However, I have become a bit more endeared to it again because it's so unique and you, it, it does grow on you if at first you don't, you don't like it. Now, if it never grows on you, you can see it's quite easy to change the strap on this watch and arguably this is a this is a pretty simple change it doesn't take a lot of time but in my opinion it changes the watch completely i'll show it to you here on the wrist i think this looks great even though the strap is not necessarily the right size it's still it's such a versatile watch it's so it's black on black diver black face watch diver style you can really throw any strap on this and i think it's going to look great and that's certainly one of the reasons why the watch has had so much success. I'll give you one last look here. You can see that the watch does stand kind of tall on my wrist, but again, it's supposed to be a sports timepiece. You're not expecting it to be slim. You're not expecting it to slip under a dress cuff. So if you're buying the SKX, you know what you're getting into and most collectors do. And most of the time they love it. Lastly, speaking of the movement, we are working with a Seiko 7S26 caliber. Now that's gonna be, as you saw here, 21 joules. The power reserve is about 40, 41 hours, which is pretty standard, even in modern Swiss movements, let's say. Um, and this 7S26, I mean, the Seiko SKX was released in 1996, so it's not a modern movement. Now, it does show its age in some respects. Now, what are those respects? You can see here that the crown is not screwed into the case so I have the crown open although it's in position zero all the way in and I'm winding it and nothing is happening and that's because this movement doesn't have hand winding functionality that functionality is something that is uh, very, almost universal to modern watches however that's one of the downsides of this movement however you trade it off essentially for having the screw down crown which allows this watch to be taken down to 200 meters. Continuing on with the movement, and I'll just bring this up to give you a better look, even though again, the movements are exactly the same. Another function missing from this timepiece. Again, the movement is a great movement. It's durable. It'll take hits and keep ticking. The accuracy is decent for the price anyways, but there is no hacking seconds. So again, modern calibers, modern movements, when you pull out the crown to the time setting position, you can see that I can move the hands. Usually that second hand would stop. So what that allows you to do is you can be super precise when setting the time on the watch because again, you're waiting exactly for when to start it. The second hand is stopped. You set it and then you can, you're can you lined up exactly. You really can't do that with this timepiece, which is not necessarily a shame, but it's something to be aware of. and. It's one of those aspects that collectors don't just love this watch for its advantages and its versatility. They love it for its imperfections as well. But definitely something that I wanted to point out. There you have it. That's our review of the popular Seiko SKX-007. Now, if that left you with any questions or comments, make sure to leave them below. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you're looking for pricing on these pieces, given that they're discontinued now and there's tons of sellers around the world, although of course diminishing at this point, check the links in the description to get a better idea.
As always, I'm Raphael. This is Bespoke Unit. Thanks for watching.